Alice Marr is one of Ireland's leading artists. Her work is as diverse as her choice of media. Her new show, Becoming, a mid-career retrospective, charts the development of her work over the past 25 years. The idea of a retrospective, does that fill an artist, or for you specifically, yeah. with satisfaction or panic? Panic, to, to begin, well not panic, it's just the very word, retro, right, because it's all about looking back. But for me, I like to grab it as an opportunity to kind of reassess what was done and more prospective in a way of looking forward to what might come next. Some pieces I was like, no, 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 no. You know, and a lot of, some of the work, of course, is very ephemeral too. So I made works, let's say, in the early 90s, like the berry dress. They have deteriorated, you know, over the years. I was like, oh, that's looking a bit, you know, to show in the exhibition. But actually, the whole notion of time is part of a retrospective, you know, so it's about the 25 years. So we've included works like the berry dress for that very reason, just to show how time has passed and what happens to work. You work, Alice, in all sorts of media, all represented here in this retrospective. I often wonder, you know, how you decide or choose, there's a decision made for you, as to what media to use to explore some particular idea that you have. Well, it's more the ideas choose the medium, you know, rather than me. The drawings in this room come from a show from 2007, which was in the RHA. And I was thinking, how are those drawings going to show me, you know, what's the next move, what's the next move? But there was a little tiny shelf in that show as well with small little pencil drawings. And when I looked at those really closely, I could see, you know, the underwork that I'd done and rubbed out in order to reach each drawing, each figure. And I thought, what would happen if you could show all the different uh, stages in the drawing? And that's how it led me to information. When you began your practice, Alice, was there anyone, was there one particular medium that you used? Painting, and we have an example, one tiny painting from, from 1988 or 9, I think, in the show. And drawing then, moved into drawing as a major practice and then began to make objects. And I would say that cell that was made in the Camino Jail for a forest cell there was the first installation that I made, particularly for a particular space. Thus began my kind of interest in space itself. It's just a gigantic ball of brambles, or briars as we call them. It actually smells, it has a smell, like a kind of a bitter outdoor smell. So it's like nature brought indoors and it was very particular for that jail at the time this idea of something being incarcerated you know something that was free and that's cut and brought in let's talk about this space uh, because because Emma is is under renovation you've ended up in here it's not an art gallery it's not an art space and, and yet I think it's great I think it's fantastic and uh, when they said to me you know how would you feel about an off-site place I said I'd love it where's it gonna be and is there anything here that is actually site specific. I have a new piece in the lecture theatre, a lighting, which is particularly just lights where I light up the little scratchings that the former students have done on their discs. The little scratchings is a polite way of describing it. <laughs> Vandalism is what we called it. Yeah. Well actually uh, it's very interesting what people write. The title Alice of this retrospective is becoming. Well there's a word can mean several things. You know, you look very becoming all sorts of meanings, but I suppose the main one is becoming as in changing from one thing to another, and it strikes me nearly all of your work is about that change in metamorphosis. That's right, yeah, a lot of the work does refer to change, and a lot of it appears to be, is in flux anyway, if you think of the ephemeral pieces like the thorns, you know, the ball of thorns, or something, because it's already changing as you look at it even, so that word becoming was, was very particularly chosen for this show in the hope that it's becoming something else as well. And because it's retrospective, you know, you, you're inclined to assume it also means something specific about, about you, it's about Alice becoming the artist she is now. Yeah, but if I am becoming the artist I am now, well then I'll be a different artist tomorrow. So, <laughs> because it's an eternal becoming, you know, we're in eternal change, really. Even as I speak to you, you're changing. And because you keep exploring that idea of changing, a lot of this stuff ends up being quite unsettling and, and disturbing. But something like hair, which we all have, you do all sorts of things with it. Sometimes beautiful, but again, sometimes I find really kind of unnerving. Yeah. Well, I suppose 
the scale is what probably maybe unnerves you. Those works would be from the 90s, probably, yeah, the 90s, 96, that kind of thing. So at that time, I think I was probably looking at what one would call the language of hair and uh, its meaning, you know, its social meaning for women, I suppose, so that your hair is really a part of your identity. How really long hair, you know, at a certain point, it's very attractive, but then when it gets too long, it's kind of disturbing because it kind of allies you to wildness, I think, or, you know, out of controlness. So I guess that's the, that's the kind of territory and the subject that I would have been dealing with. There's a film in this show called Cassandra's Necklace, and the, the, the use of tongues in your work is something that we've all seen before. So tell me a little bit about that, because that, to me, can be very, very disturbing. That was from 2003, when I made a series of self-portraits of myself, you know, the artists, myself, um, wearing particular um, objects or becoming particular objects. And uh, the Necklace of Tongues was one of those. I had been passing through the English market and I saw a mountain of tongs there and that's where they sell a lot of offal and that's so I thought God, they're really interesting and I bought a big bunch of them and kept them in the freezer for years before they came to me when I was making that work so I decided to make a necklace out of them. Cassandra was the figure who prophesied the future but nobody believed her. To me, she's very connected to that necklace of tongues because her language was taken from her. Thanks, most. Thank you.